Hello everyone, Cat Weasel here, welcome to the channel and welcome back to our playthrough of Eldritch Horror Rise of the Elder Things where we're now on turn three. It's going to be a little change in this episode going forwards. What it was, I was having to think about the wonderful flavour narrative that the other players have been uh, supplying throughout this playthrough and also trying to fit it in a little bit better. It seemed a little clunky to sort of like fit it in just before the action phase when we were actually, you know, let's just get on with what the people are doing. So what I've decided to do is to put a sort of previously on the Rise of the Elder Things segment that will come right after this. We'll do the flavour text and it will also show each individual investigator's player tray. So you'll be able to see exactly where they're up to, exactly what items they've got, where their health and sanity is up to, all that sort of stuff will be there and you'll be able to see it and listen to the flavour narrative. The flavour narratives are for the previous turn, so they won't spoil anything. That seems like a good compromise to me. What I'll also do is, down here, I will, where I've put end of intro, these look like end of intro for anybody who wants to skip the intro, I'll also put a start of turn. So if you're not bothered in the flavour text or seeing where all the individual ind investigators are up to, that's fine. You can just click that time link and it will take you immediately to the start of the action phase. Okay, having explained that, let's get into the previously on Rise of the Elder Things. Finally at Tokyo and far away from that awful creature, Wendy was hoping to find some answers. She had lived here for two years with her family before all the strange goings on had started. She wasn't sure what she would find at her father's old office, or even if it would still be there, but she knew if her father had left any clues as to what had happened, that is where they would be. Wendy knocked on the door of the office and went in. A girl looked up from the desk. Wendy, is that you? It turned out that the girl was Min Thai Fan, the secretary to her father's business partner, Mr Thomas. Wendy questioned her about the name she had on her scrap of paper, and Min explained that she had been left instructions should any of the people on the list come calling. She also gave Wendy a letter from her father. My darling daughter, if you are reading this, then you have made it to my office, and I am either missing or dead. I don't have long to write this, so I will keep it short. I knew that you would make it here, and now is the time to tell you. My life's work has been devoted to uncovering a great secret. Years ago, a race of great elder beings were driven underground. Now I fear that they have found a way to come back via powerful gates that open to other dimensions. Ursula had uncovered more secrets in Antarctica, but I fear for her life. I have enclosed my notes containing all I have found about the gates and how to seal them. My associates in my diary will be able to help. Trust them with your life. Sorry I did not explain this to you earlier, and sorry for being so brief. I must go. Stay safe, my little girl. Love, Daddy. After showing Min the letter, she said she would do her best to get word to the others. She also told Wendy about her father's lockup in Waseda. Following Min's lead, Wendy set off. The lockup was deserted. Wendy broke the lock and went in. There, in the centre of the lockup, was a gate just like the ones described in her father's notes. Wendy fumbled for them and said the words written on them. At once she felt a strange sensation pulling her forwards into the gate. She fought against it using all her will, but it was no good. When she awoke, she found herself in the plateau of Leng, knowing she had closed the gate. Rex, darling, so good to see you, Jenny exclaimed as her old friend approached her table. The Dashing Sax was a favourite jazz club of hers and she had hoped Rex would think to seek her out. She ordered them both some drinks and their famous rack of lamb for a meal, exchanging pleasantries before getting down to brass tacks. Rex wondered how Jenny knew that he would show up. She offered him a little pout. Because shopping here was deplorable, love. I had no luck whatsoever, 
She giggled then, taking a sip of her champagne. A spot of misfortune always seems to follow you, dear, and I never have a bad day shopping, so I was sure that you were close. Rex did not appear that amused. She waved a hand at him. Don't be hurt, she offered with another pout. It seemed to work well on most men and some women. Steady on, Doug. Family friendly channel. I still brought you something. She slid an oil wrapped packet and an envelope across the table with a sly grin. It's a gun, she whispered as he took the offerings. And a ticket on an ocean liner to London. You need a spot of a vacation. They talked into the night and caught up, agreeing to meet up again soon and seek to help Ursula. The ticket to London was so that Rex could follow the trail while Jenny pursued her sister. She was sure that the two things were closely tied together. The next afternoon Jenny found herself on the oddest adventure, helping to save some escaped elephants. She brought her blunderbuss just in case and was glad she did not need to use it. While sorting out the elephant's plight, she noted that she was being watched by a man in a fine suit who hid his visage under a hat. She gave chase. She followed him down to the docks, an unseemly warehouse, but she was unafraid. Large gun in hand, she crept into the building. A blinding light erupted inside, followed by an inhuman shriek. Stealing herself, she ran through the boxes, just in time to see the man step through the swirling otherworldly portal. He offered her an evil grin as he vanished, and in his place a massive humanoid creature covered in hair emerged. Glad I didn't use this on the poor elephants, dear. I will be using it on you, though, she shouted as she levelled the blunderbuss at the beast. It hadn't taken Rex long to find Jenny, as he had suspected she was in the Dashing Sacks, a bay nightclub. Fortunately, Rex had packed a half-decent jacket, he whitened his spats, trimmed his Van Dyke and got in. Jenny was her usual bubbly self, a personality she kept topped up by copious amounts of French bubbly. As ever, she was incredibly charming. She had inherited the barn's knack for remembering everyone. His six months out of college as a Cub Society reporter in LA and San Francisco had involved either Jenny or Isabel Barnes being caught up in various society escapades. Isabel was particularly wild, and Rex had made some effort to give her a break, recognising a youthful exuberance he couldn't hope to emulate. After removing Isabel's name from an illegal gambling and prohibition story that had involved Isabel making whoopee during a shootout in a mobster's club, her older sister had been grateful enough to pull a few strings for him. Rex was then able to move out east for a job with the Boston Globe. Throughout the evening, he heard enough from Jenny to confirm his fears, he kept what had happened to Carnby to himself. Jenny was a plenty tough kid, despite her classy upbringing, but he didn't want her to know the horrific depths to which this kind of scum would subject Isabel. He wondered how Jenny's younger sibling had gotten involved with the occult. Isabel had certainly taken her share of wooden nickels in her time. It was something that Isabel probably considered a harmless hoot and a blast at first. That reminded him of Crowley. The man was always surrounded by young socialites that he dazzled with his own formidable personality, which he sweetened further with promises of supernatural power. Mainly so he could four-flush them out of their daddy's mazuma. That said, there was no denying that the man had power. It might be worth chasing that London angle, so long as Rex was careful. After a terrifying few minutes at the club, where Jenny, talking in what she no doubt considered a whisper, had given him a revolver and a ship ticket right across the table in the middle of a crowded club, they had punched the bag for an enjoyable evening. They both liked jazz, and Kidori's Sunshine Orchestra were in fine form. After a rather uneventful trip, Jack finally arrived in Cape Town. Picking up his bag, he walked off the ship, and right into another group of policemen. It appeared that the police in Rome had heard where Jack was going, they had wired ahead to let the local authorities know that he was coming. After a few hours of questioning, one of the police finally made an offer, and it wasn't a good one. They wanted a little bit of cash to make it all go away. Now Jack wasn't exactly swimming in money. Archaeology doesn't always pay as well as it might, but he did have one thing, confidence. He took charge of the conversation and managed to convince them that it was in their better interest to let him go. Now, gearing up for another expedition inland, 
he looked at the pair of books he'd acquired. He knew a woman, Daisy Walker, who would love to have them, but she was all the way back in the United States right now. Shrugging, he picked up the old journal and cracked it open. Anything, however remote, could help resolve recent occurrences. And welcome to the action phase and our first player, Wendy. Wendy is going to move along this uncharted path to the city of the Elder Things. As soon as she arrives there, she is going to focus. So that is it for Wendy and her action phase. Next up is Jenny Barnes. And here we are with Jenny in San Francisco. For her first action, she is going to gain a focus, just like Wendy. And then she is going to prepare to travel for her second action. And she is going to purchase one of these, a train ticket. So that is it for Jenny Barnes. Next up will be Rex Murphy. And here we are with Rex. Rex, first of all, is going to move to Arkham. And then he's going to spend his ship ticket and he's going to move to London. So there we are with Rex in London. Let's discard his ship ticket. Now he's in London, he is going to use his special ability. So he's going to gain any number of assets of our choice from the reserve with a total value less than his influence. His influence is five, so he can get a four cost item or a combination thereof. And he is going to take the urban guide. So it's an ally. If you are on a city space, investigators on your space roll one additional die when resolving tests, except when resolving other world encounters. So this should be good for Rex. He needs all the dice he can get. So he has now got the urban guide. And that is it for his action phase. But we have to replace the urban guide. So here we are with the asset deck. A bit of quick rubbish shuffle. In fact, make a mess of it because one of them turned over. Your handcuffs are still in there, Tony. <laughs> so that's good to know. Should Tony Morgan come into the game? So there we go. And we'll do a cut. And we get. Consecration, which is a service. When you gain this card, immediately gain one boon condition. Then discard this card. Excellent for Rex. So we'll put the Consecration into the Asset Reserve. Very good. Right, so that's it for Rex and for his action phase. Our last investigator for the action phase is Monterey Jack. And he is down in Cape Town. And here we are with Monterey. And for his first action, he's going to do a component action. And he's going to read his old journal. So let's have a look at it. Just refresh our memories. Old journal, unique asset. Item, tome, test observation. His observation is three. If you pass, you discover information that may prove useful to your cause. And flip this card. So let's roll. Let's roll. We'll put that in there. Can we see it? We can. And he's got three dice. And he gets a six and passes. Woohoo! Good stuff. So flip the card. Old journal. As you read a particular arcane passage, you enter a trance in which your spirit leaves your body and travels to a cave with glowing crystals embedded in the walls and ceiling. In the cave, you meet a large creature with a mass of octopus-like tentacles for a face and a shining golden eyes. The Elder God speaks to you through your thoughts, tasking you with an important mission. Gain two task-unique assets and discard one of them and this card. 
Well, you know what? I know that Monty is not my investigator, but that would really knock me off. We've wasted an action to actually, you know, pass and read it, and now it's just giving us another unique asset which we're going to have to probably go somewhere, use an action again, and read that. That is a cop-out of a card. That is bad, bad design. I do not like that card. That is just a joke. <laughs> As I say, it's not my investigator, but that would majorly rack me off. That is not on at all. That is bad design just got that it's supposed to be something good and now you're just chasing around with another set of cards that is that is poor very poor just do not like that card at all right contain my rage right we need two task assets ancient sword that'd be nice but it's not a task asset that's an ally it's an item that is that's a task that's and we need another one we've got two tasks all right let's get rid of the rest of the deck so we've got two other tasks to waste our time on uh this is where this play by video will break down a bit i'm gonna have to decide which one to take unfortunately lawrence can't because he's not here but hopefully it'll be blindingly obvious so sealing the ancient ones unique asset task when you pass a law test while resolving a spell effect, you may discard that spell after resolving its effects to place one Eldritch token on this card. Then you may flip this card. Now, sealing the old ones from previous games, I think these are pretty good. So, there you go. Oh, one other thing. And this is pretty much to the players who I'm playing with. Um, don't look through all your sealing the old ones cards and flip them over. Let's uh, let's be playing the game like we're playing it properly. <laughs> that's just not particularly to you, Lawrence. Just that's general to everybody. Um, so when you get stuff like this, don't be tempted to flick the different like cards in your box over just to see possibilities of what you might get. So there's a there's a ceiling the old ones, and the other one is sacrifices to make. Well, if we're going off. <laughs> If we're going off like the artwork, I know which one I'd pick. Tax. Task, sorry. When you perform a focus action, you may spend one health to place one health on this card, then you may flip this card. So it's pretty much which one. Yeah. Now, I'm tempted to do sacrifices to make, despite the artwork. The reason being, he doesn't have a spell. He can get a focus any time. Yeah. So I'm going to pick this one, yeah? Unfortunately, as I say, Lawrence isn't here and I've got to pick. I just think this will be an easier one to do. And he's also got, he's got seven uh, health. So I think he's got plenty of health to do it. So I'm going to pick this one. If it makes anybody who's playing the game with me feel any better, just pretend that there wasn't a choice, yeah? So sacrifices to make are the task that he is going to take we will put that on his player area and we will discard the other one so there we go that goes with the treasure map over here and oh we've got to discard the old journal as well what a load of rubbish that card was oh draw another card bloody ridiculous crap design right <laughs> Right, so that's his first action, his component action. Next, he is going to move, and he's going to move to the heart of Africa, because hopefully he will be able to do the expedition. That is it for the action phase. Let's move on to the encounter phase. Welcome back to the encounter phase and our first player, Wendy Adams, who's at the city of the Elder Things. Just one thing to note, we didn't use it this turn, but we could well be using it in a future turn. There is some text 
beneath the City of the Elder things, which says for a local action you can test observation. If you pass, gain a clue. Or you can spend a clue to get an artifact. Pretty good, because we need clues to pick these up for the mystery. And if you recall, we need to pick two of them up. And it costs two clues each. So four clues will pick up two of these Eldritch tokens, which we can put on the mystery to solve it. Can't do it this turn, but it's a possibility for next turn. Right, what is Wendy going to do? It's the encounter phase. Well, she's going to have a City of the Elder Things encounter. So that is the blue deck. So, quick shuffle. And a cut. And let's see what we get. The City of the Elder Things. A thick fog masks your presence from the Shoggoths surrounding you. Nice. We need a will minus one check. Because it is... Let's put it up there. Can we see it? I think we can see it there. Yeah, just about. Put that here. And... Because it's a will minus one check, that means her mysterious tome comes into play if she has to spend that focus. So first of all, let's see what a will is. I don't think it's that clever. Her will is two. Uh, but she is blessed. So let's get a couple of blue dice. Oh, rubbish. She's gonna spend a focus. Obviously, she doesn't seem to uh, keep hold of these focuses too much. But that goes back in and she's using her mysterious tome as well because it is a will use of a focus. Let me just check that that's correct. In fact, we can all check it's correct. So let's have a look. Mysterious tome. Yes, when you spend a focus to re-roll a die when resolving a law or will test. So we're going to be able to re-roll two dice. And she gets two successes this time. Typical. Right. So, there we go. If you pass, you hide in the fog and examine a mural that depicts the binding of a god. Advance the active mystery by one. Wendy Adams, you are an absolute star. We have advanced the mystery by one. And what that means, just let me get the put these back and get the mystery card. What that means is we is down here is you put obviously a Eldritch token on the card. Advancing the mystery by one means we put one Eldritch token on this card, so we're halfway there. We didn't have to bother with the clues or anything because Wendy was just such a star. So that is good news. We'll put that there. Get that out of the way. I've uh, put that just in front of that card. So excellent stuff by Wendy. Well worth spending a focus for, I think. Right, oh, so after Wendy's successful encounter, let's move along to Jenny Barnes. She's getting her blunderbuss out. And here we are with Jenny at San Francisco. Right, what does she want to do? Well, she wants to close that gate, not the Golden Gate. She just wants to, she wants to close that portal gate there. Bit of a problem. There's something in the way. This guy. So, hairy looking mother, isn't he? The Wendigo. So there he is, eating a skull or something. Very nice. So we're going to have to take him on. First of all, we've got... Hang on. Let's get rid of that. We can see properly. There we are. So first of all, we've got to do the horror check, which is a will test. Get a single success we're laughing we don't lose any sanity we need two successes on the combat check in order to kill it but three successes so we don't lose any health it's a strength minus one test and if we defeat the monster during a combat encounter we've got to roll another die on a one or a two we'll gain a hunger condition so let's put him over there let's get rolling 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 you can see that so first of all, we've got a will of three. So let's see if we can pass the horror check. 
A six. We pass the horror check. We'll get rid of them ones because we don't want them later. No, sir. Because we've now got the combat check. We're using the blunderboss, so any ones we roll will lose a success. Sixes, we get two successes. That's cool. So that is three strength plus two for the actual blunderboss, plus an extra die because of the 0.25 automatic, it's a total of six. Minus one off this guy is five dice. So one, two, three, four, five. Excellent. Come on. Sixes, please. Ho ho. Three anyway, but that ended up five successes. <laughs> Blew it away. So he's gone. We've got to roll another die about the hunger condition. So why not roll a six? Always re roll your sixes, kids. A five. Brilliant. So she's got rid of this baby. He's gone, man. Let's get rid. Right, so we like those dice, we'll keep those there. And next up, it's the actual try and close the gate time. So let's get the gate deck. Here it is. And let's give it a wee shuffle. And there we go. And a quick cut. Right, let's see. Where is she going? Yugoth. Always a delight. You discover a fetid creature with wings and webbed feet. The beast is strange like something from your wildest dreams. You may spend one clue to resolve the pass effect. If you do not have the clue, resolve the fail effect. Well, we don't have the clue, so we're resolving the fail effect. The creature is terrifying, but if you can keep your calm, you will be able to overpower it. Test will. Good. That's three dice. And remember, we've still got the focus. Come on, Jenny. Let's do it. Oh, pass. She nailed it. If you pass, you subdue the creature and use it to return home. Close this gate. Woohoo! And there's the fail if anybody wants to have a look at it. Well done, Jenny. On fire. Discard that card. Discard this gate. Put it over there on top of the other one. Fantastic. Good old Jenny Barnes. We love her. Right, well done, Jenny. Next, let's see if we can keep it going with good old Rex. And here we are with Rex in London, and he's going to have a London encounter, which is the orange deck. So here we go. Quick cut. London. Ronald True knows dark secrets, but Ronald True framed him for murder. Spawn one clue. Well, we'll do that first before we read the rest. So we've spawned a clue. Hurrah! You can die up in our X. A clue, not a monster. Get the correct bag, idiot. Right, that's the correct bag. <laughs> That would be Rex's luck, wouldn't it? Spawn a clue, so he spawns a monster. Right, the clue is... Plateau of Leng. Fantastic. We've got another clue down in Antarctica. That's just where we want them. Brilliant stuff. Well done, Rexy. Let's read the rest of this card. You asked True to confess. Test influence. Well, he's got five influence, which becomes six because we're on a city space and we've got the urban guide. So we've got six cursed dice and we need a six. And we've got a re-roll because of the magic talisman. And it could do if we could see me actually making the roll. Yes. Oh, this is rubbish, man. I can only roll sixes with single dice, it seems. Right, so we're going to use, I think we can roll everything with the, yep, re-roll all of your dice. 
come on. Yes, two this time. It's all blood. It should have got a <laughs> I'd have been I'd have been so disappointed if I didn't roll a six with 12 dice. It would have been untrue. Right, <laughs> so he passed. Good. Right, okay. Not Rome, London. If you pass, Drew asks a favour in return. Gain one task, unique asset. Oh, anybody who wants to see what the fail condition was? There you go. But he gets a task, unique asset. Pick rolls up. Again, another quick shuffle. I'm sorry for all this shuffling, but I have had, shall we say, emails in the past accusing me of just seeding the deck, so that's why I do it. So feel free to fast forward past them. There we go. And our first task. It's an item. A relic task. Exploring the ruins. After resolving an expedition encounter or a mystic ruins encounter, you may spend one focus to place one focus on this card. Then you may flip this card. Hmm. Might be interesting to uh, give to somebody else if we get an opportunity. Right, I'll put that on his player tray. Mind you, you know what happened last time he had a task asset. He ended up losing three sanity in the mythos phase. Okay, excellent stuff from Rex. He's passed a task. He passed a task. He's passed a test and he's got a task and he's actually spawned a clue. Hurrah! Right, let's get that out of the way. Where are we going next? We are going to visit Monterey Jack, who is in the heart of Africa. And here we are with Monterey in the heart of Africa with an expedition. So we'll need the expedition deck. And here it is. So let's whiz it over and take a read. You consider your options for gaining access to the legendary canyons of what? Itori Kendi. Resolve the pass effect to take the Itori River to the canyon, or resolve the fail effect to approach through the jungle. We'll take the success effect. Yeah, we'll go through the. Uh, we'll use the river. The powerful current threatens to pull you under. Strength minus one. That's why I picked the river. Thought it might be a strength test. I, will, I might just check the other one just to check because I like to see if I'm right. The other one, I'm thinking it'll be observation test, you know, for not getting lost. But we're doing a strength test. He's got a strength of four, which is his best asset. Sorry, ability. Put that in there. It's minus one, I believe. Yep, yeah, so he's going to get three dice. One, two, three. He has a focus. But he doesn't need a focus because he's Monterey Jack and I don't think he's failed a single roll yet. So, <laughs> Monty does it. Good stuff. And if you pass, you find a strange object waiting for you on the shore. Gain one artifact. Oh, there's a fail condition. But we've got that. We get an artifact. So we get the artifact deck. Here we go. Needless to say, we could do with something really good. And a cut. The crystal of the elder things. How thematic is that? Just go away, <laughs> go away, Mark, and have narrative fun with that, mate. Item, Mythos card text effects cannot cause you to lose health or sanity. Brilliant. So that is the Crystal of the Elder Things. Not too good, but at least it's extremely thematic. Yep, yeah, great stuff. So we'll put that on his player tray. Excellent. We will put the artifact deck back. Now, we'll discard that, and this goes to the Amazon. 
I'll move that to the Amazon. Discard that. And put the deck back. Fantastic. Right, so that is the end of the encounter phase. Next up, it's the laugh and chuckle phase. And welcome back to the laugh and chuckle phase. Let's get the laugh and chuckle deck. Here we go. So remember, Wendy is still our lead investigator, so we'll flick it over. Oh, another green. So we've got Omen movement again. We're on a blue constellation gate. We have no blue constellation gates. So we're still on 17 Doom. We're doing brilliantly. Monster Surge. Now we can't have a Monster Surge because we don't have a blue constellation gate. Which means we get another gate. So top of this stack, what do we get? The pyramids, which is a blue constellation gate. Move that out of the way, put that on the pyramids. In fact, I've got a I've got an already prepared stand, the one we used for San Francisco. So there we go, there's the pyramids. And we get a monster. Pick a monster out, get to the bottom. And we have a cultist. So let's have a look. Of course, when we flick it, we've got to use the cultist information on the Ancient One sheet, which is, hang on, well, I'll just uh, pop it on a stand. It is, it's minus one on the horror check, but it's a law check. And if you remember, if we succeed at that law check, then this cultist will actually be freed from the shackles of an Elder Thing mind control and it will become an ally, we will pick an ally. So that'll be great. Unfortunately, if we don't pass that law check, then we'll have to fight it. But it's your usual cultist, it isn't that difficult. So we've got a cultist at the pyramids. Brilliant. So that's not too bad. Right, oh, in fact, if we can have if Wendy can clear up the mystery in Antarctica, then Monterey can just move up to the pyramids. So th things have got Wendy and like Jack, they're just on fire, aren't they? Um, joined by Jenny this turn, but Monty, he hasn't failed a bloody roll. Right, clues. So we get to spawn two clues. I could, hopefully I'll continue pulling clues for Antarctica. That'd be nice. So what's next? Whoop. Nine. That is Greenland. And the second one is whoop. Three, which is the Southern Pacific. So not that easy to get to, but at least the South Atlantic and the South Pacific one, they're within reach of Buenos Aires quite easily. And the Arkham one and the Greenland one are quite close as well. So if either Rex or Jenny wanted to go for them, that would be pretty cool. So not too bad. We haven't got a bad spread of clues. Very good. Pop this up. Right. It's a tentacle card though. Bad, 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 bad. In the night sky, the planets and stars have aligned, signalling the downfall of mankind. Hang on, we're only on the third Mythos card. In a single night, tragedy befalls humanity all across the globe. This isn't good, is it? The time has come. Discard two Eldritch tokens from each room of Mythos card in play unless investigators, as a group, spend clues equal to half the investigators. We haven't got a room of Mythos card. That means we can't spend the clues either. Oh, if there are no Rumour Mythos cards in play with Eldritch tokens on them, advance the Omen by one instead. Oh, that's not too bad. I thought it was going to say pick out a Rumour card, but we go up to... Oh, damn. We go up to the Green Comet. We've got Istanbul with a Green Comet. So we move down to 16. But again... We're just where we started. 
So that's not bad, is it? Well, that's okay. That That's not as bad as it could have been. So as far as a tentacle card goes, that's not too bad. So flick that back there. Woohoo! And put this over here and then continually knock over the Elder Things card like I'm doing every single Mythos phase. Right, so that is it. I don't know about you guys, but I thought that was an excellent turn. We've got, from nowhere, we've got an Eldritch token on the mystery, thanks to Wendy. Monterey has, has just continued being absolutely on fire. He's he's doing really well. He got like he's been gypped by getting a task unique asset off that old journal, which I think is a bit of a con, frankly. Um, but other than that, he's he didn't let that bother him. Unlike it bothered me, it didn't bother Jack. He just carried on. He got himself the crystal of the elder things, which isn't the best. Uh, re uh, isn't the best artifact either. But you know what? He's going to get some good stuff sooner or later. I can just feel it. The way he's going on. Um, everybody. Oh, Jenny. Jenny! She's a beast. She's just there. She's just blowing the hell out of everything. And I've just... Oh, you know what? I can't remember if she rolled any ones. Oh, I'm going to go... <laughs> when I edit now, I'm just hoping she didn't roll any ones when she did that. <laughs> when she attacked. But hopefully things were fine. I was having a cup of tea at the time, Doug. I'm sure everything's going to be absolutely groovy. And as I say, that's it for turn three. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks so much for all the subscriptions, for all the help and for all the support. Thanks also for all the strategy tips. Please keep them coming. May not always follow them, but that doesn't mean we don't value the input. So if you want to put them in the comments or you wish to go over to tube tables and use the thread, that is fine. Please, please do. Any sort of mistakes I've made, please flag them up. I will do my best to fix them next turn. I don't think I did any mistakes last turn, which must be something of a first, but I'm sure somebody six months down the line will point something out. But as it stands at the moment, we're okay. If I've made, but as I say, if I've made any uh, errors this turn, please let me know and I will try and fix it for next turn. Oh, and thank you to everybody who's been across the board game links to upvote the site. I think we're on 220 likes now. That's just amazing, man. Brilliant. Thanks so much. Well, as I say, that is it for turn three. I hope you enjoyed the new format. That's what I meant to say. I was searching around in my head. I thought there's something else I want to ask. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed the new format. I hope it works for everybody. For those of you that don't like the narrative, then, you know, just flip past it. There will be a, like, time link below and you will be able to get straight into the action phase should you so wish. Those of you that do enjoy the narrative, I hope you enjoyed being able to look at the investigator player trays and everything and you were able to see where everybody was up to prior to the turn starting. So I hope, let me know on that. If you don't like it, we'll try and sort something else out. But I think it went rather well, but I would because it's my idea. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> stop wittering on. It's time to finish the video. So... Thank you again for watching. I hope you join me next time for turn four. But until then, this is me, Cat Weasel, signing off. Toodaloo.